talk about Wanderlust. Hi, I'm Emily and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that make you want to travel. That Paris exists and anyone could choose to live anywhere else in the world will always be a mystery to me. For this list, we're looking at movies whose plots and or settings will awaken your inner travel bug. Number 10, Crazy Rich Asians. So your family is like rich? We're comfortable. That is exactly what a super rich person would say. The surprise hit of 2018, Crazy Rich Asians won over audiences and critics alike thanks to its fresh take on cinema's overplayed fish out of water trope. The film sees Rachel Chu traveling to Singapore to meet her boyfriend's extremely affluent family for the first time. Mom, this is Rachel Chu. Oh my gosh, I, I'm so happy to meet you, Mrs. Young. <laughs> or uh, auntie, right? Upon arrival, she's immediately thrust into Singaporean high society. Much like Rachel, viewers are left starry-eyed by the dazzling real-life locations featured in the film. From the breathtaking gardens by the bay, to the sights and sounds of Singapore's world-famous Chinatown. <laughs> the film is a glowing endorsement of the city-state's best sights. And those who saw Crazy Rich Asians likely added Singapore to their bucket list before the credits had even rolled. Number 9. Roman Holiday <laughs> An Oscar-winning romantic comedy from Hollywood's golden age, Roman Holiday is the story of a reporter who falls for a princess while the latter is on a state visit to Rome. Starring Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck as the princess and the reporter respectively, the film weaves a compelling narrative that sees the leads visiting some of Rome's most magical locations. From the Trevi Fountain to Piazza Venezia. With its dreamy overtures, marvelous real-life locations, and idealized scenes of Roman life, the film will surely have you craving a slice of La Dolce Vita. Many a film set in Rome has been made since, but few inspire a desire to travel quite like Roman Holiday. But don't you have to work? Work now. Today is going to be a holiday. But you don't want to do a lot of silly things. Don't I? First wish, one sidewalk cafe coming right up. Number eight, Midnight in Paris. What a town. That's to visit. I can see myself living here. I feel like the Parisians kind of get me. I can see myself just strolling along the left bank with a baguette under my arm, headed to Cafe de Floor to scribble away on my book. A film that will leave you with two kinds of wanderlust, regular and historical. Midnight in Paris sees Owen Wilson's floundering screenwriter Gil Pender transported back to 1920s Paris, where he falls in love and rubs shoulders with his literary and artistic idols. Gil. Yes, Gil. Gil Pender. Gil Pender. Hemingway. Hemingway? You like my book? Liked? I loved all, all your work. As Gil jumps from the romanticized Paris of the past and the more complicated present, there remains one constant, the unending elegance and appeal of the French capital. The film's shots of Paris's most famous landmarks seamlessly introduces viewers to the enchanting city. And throughout the film, characters rarely miss an opportunity to walk by, near or through some beautiful section of the city. Which, we must say, inspires us to do the same. Number 7. Vicky Cristina Barcelona. To uh, your summer in Barcelona. No. Welcome. Salud. If Paris isn't for you, why not take a cue from another Woody Allen flick and book a trip to Barcelona? You'll find all the inspiration you need in his 2008 film, Vicky Cristina Barcelona, which focuses on two American women who fall for the same man during a summer in the Spanish city. I mean, I'll show you around the city and we'll eat well, we'll drink good wine, we'll make love. Yeah, who, who exactly is going to make love? Hopefully the three of us. The backdrop for the trio's unique romantic entanglement is one that Woody Allen is constantly exploiting, reaffirming just how spectacular a place it is through shots of the breathtaking architecture and stunning natural vistas. As the story unfolds, Barcelona, and by extension Spain, begin to feel like the perfect place for a summer getaway, and perhaps a passionate fling with a charming local artist. It's a great story. Yeah. That's a great story. Number six, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. The 
the eyes, Jace. She moves like a woman. I'm Walter. Mitty. Directed by and starring Ben Stiller, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty is the travel inspo flick you didn't know you needed. Stiller plays a daydreaming negative assets manager at Life Magazine, who embarks on a journey across the globe in search of a missing negative. Come on, that's a good lead. You should follow that up. Yeah, follow it up in Greenland. Yeah, why not? Go, crack the case. As Walter Mitty travels to the far-flung locales of Iceland and Afghanistan, and hikes the mighty Himalayas, viewers are treated to dramatic shots of the surrounding landscapes. That looks like fun. I think I'm gonna jump in. Hey, what, what was the picture, Sean? We're gonna be odd-numbered if you don't join. These evocative locations may not be at the top of your bucket list now, but one viewing of The Secret Life of Walter Mitty and you'll be scouring the web for the next flight to Reykjavik. Number 5. The Motorcycle Diaries ¿Y si abandonamos esta mierda que nos da tanto trabajo? Así, y andar a pata por todo el continente, genio. As anyone who's ever traveled will surely tell you, exploration and self-reflection are two sides of the same coin. This is something the Motorcycle Diaries' Ernesto discovers as he travels through South America in the 50s with his friend Alberto. Based on the memoir of revolutionary leader Che Guevara, the film takes viewers on a journey deep into the heart of Latin America. It's there that Guevara first began to muse over the social injustices facing the region's lower classes. No teníamos mucho, solo una tierra seca y difícil. Eran de su abuelo. Eran nuestra. Hasta que llegó un terrateniente y nos sacó a patar. Y a eso le llaman progreso. While you're not likely to become a Marxist leader simply by watching the film, you will be enamored by the spectacular shots of Machu Picchu, the Andes, and the Atacama Desert. Just make sure to buy a better motorcycle for your journey. Number 4. Eat, Pray, Love I want to go someplace where I can marvel at something. Language. Gelato, spaghetti, something. Ugh. Eat, Pray, Love sees recent divorcee Elizabeth Gilbert embark on a journey of self-discovery, one that takes her to three unique, yet equally enthralling destinations. When you're desperate in your life and some guy who, yes, looks a little like Yoda hands you a prophecy, you have to respond. As the title implies, Gilbert's adventure is one of indulgence, learning, and understanding. Three things she experiences during her visits to Italy, India, and Indonesia, respectively. You'll find yourself watering at the mouth as Gilbert indulges her culinary desires in Italy, pining for a religious awakening during her visit to India, and finally, yearning for a steamy hookup when she takes on Indonesia. Number 3. Into the Wild A thoughtful and mature look at the life of Christopher McCandless, who in his early 20s abandoned civilization to live in the Alaskan wilderness, Into the Wild might actually dissuade some from traveling. I mean, the core of man's spirit comes from new experiences. And there you are, stubborn old man, sitting on your butt. Sitting on my butt? While it is true that McCandless experienced a lifetime's worth of adventure during his travels, his story is ultimately a tragic one, as he died while attempting to live off the land in a remote section of Alaska. Is there anybody here? Guess not! While the film handles McCandless's passing with grace, it does an even better job showcasing his exuberant personality and lust for life, something that's exhibited in his travels and social interactions. Rather than love, than money, than faith, than fame, than fairness, give me truth. Sweeping American landscapes dominate the film which is as much about the beauty of the country as it is about McCandless's journey. Number two, Lost in Translation. So what are you doing here? A uh, couple of things. Taking a break from my wife, forgetting my son's birthday, and uh, getting paid two million dollars to endorse a whiskey when I could be doing a play somewhere. Set in Japan, Lost in Translation features Bill Murray playing a disillusioned actor in Tokyo to film a whiskey commercial. While there, he encounters Charlotte, played by Scarlett Johansson, and the two bond over their shared feelings of isolation and loneliness. I'm stuck. 
Does it get easier? No. Yes. It gets easier. While this would be enough to lure any self-respecting cinephile, the film offers viewers the chance to dive headfirst into Japanese culture, with bustling Tokyo all but declaring itself the third lead. Bob and Charlotte serve as stand-ins for the viewers' curiosities about Tokyo and Japan as a whole. And while they don't exactly have a happy ending, you'll come away from it with the indescribable feeling that accompanies adding a new city to your must-visit list. Even if I'm too broke to go to most of the places on here and I want to go on all of these trips, the movies always make me feel like I'm there, you know? Anyways, here are some other movies that make you want to explore this big, bright, beautiful world. There is no way that I can go on a romantic tour of Tuscany right now, okay? I mean, I'm not ready to meet anyone. Oh, you won't. Now we can assure you. Oh? It's a gay tour of romantic Tuscany. Oh, so it would be very relaxing for you. Amélie a soudain le sentiment étrange d'être en harmonie totale avec elle-même. Tout est parfait en cet instant. La douceur de la lumière, ce petit parfum dans l'air, la rumeur tranquille de la ville. Elle inspire profondément et la vie lui paraît alors si simple et si limpide qu'un élan d'amour, comme un désir d'aider l'humanité entière, la submerge tout à coup. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in far Bombay. How far of course are we? Nobody knows. We haven't located us yet. What'd you just say? What? What you just said. Say it again. We haven't located us yet. Ah! Is that symbolic? We haven't located us yet. Went from San Diego to Ireland, Germany, Sweden. Then I'll go down in Italy. Over to Greece, Tunisia, and then I'm not too sure where I'm going in Africa. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, before trilogy. So listen, here's the deal. This is what we should do. You should get off the train with me here in Vienna and come check out the town. What? Come on, it'll be fun. Richard Linklater's Before Trilogy spans 18 years, three European locales, and one epic romance. It begins in the mid-90s when American traveler Jesse meets French student Celine and the two decide to spend the day walking the streets of Vienna together. Well, listen, we just got into Vienna today and we're looking for something fun to do. The city seamlessly weaves its way in and out of their conversation, something Linklater would replicate with Paris and Greece in the later films. I forget about how beautiful Paris is. That's not so bad being a tourist. The locations featured in the films are simultaneously backdrop and main character, as Jesse and Celine discuss love, life, and everything in between as they stroll through the lustful locations. If you can watch this trilogy without pining for a whirlwind European romance, congratulations, you're way stronger than us. But if you want true love, uh, then this is it. This is real life. It's not perfect, but it's real. And if you can't see it, then you're blind. All right, if I give up. I'm gonna go book all my flights now. Anyway, where do you want to vacation the most? Let us know in the comments, hit that like button, and subscribe to Ms. Mojo.